Hi, welcome to Don's Guitar. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the Tony Editor in developing MicroPython Internet of Things project. Tony IDE is a very lightweight editor that has a very simple interface and is easy to use. I'm gonna be showing you how to set up and configure this IDE. For the prerequisites, prepare a MicroPython compatible microcontroller unit that was downloaded with the latest MicroPython firmware. I am using a Node MCU ESP32 board in this demo. For the setup steps, first download the IDE from the Tony.org site. So, Tony comes with different versions for your operating system. So, we have here Windows, Mac, and Linux. So just select the appropriate installer for, you, for your operating system. In my case, I'm using Windows, so I downloaded the Windows installer. Next, you can now start connecting your microcontroller unit into your laptop or work workstation through the USB cable. Then we can now run our Tony editor. Once the Tony editor or integrated development editor runs, then the next thing that we need to do is to set the interpreter for our Tony IDE. To do that, just click the tools and the options and go to the interpreter tab. And in the interpreter tab, make sure that the MicroPython ESP32 is selected. If you are using a different microcontroller unit, then select the appropriate MicroPython firmware from this list. In the port or the web referral part, it should automatically detect the microcontroller unit that you have plugged in into the USB. In my case, I am using uh, a ESP32 with a Silicon Lab CP210 USB to UART bridge driver and it is connected to the COM3 of my laptop or workstation. If for some reason, the SP32 or your microcontroller unit was not detected, then make sure that the USB is firmly connected and you have downloaded the correct MicroPython firmware into it. I have a separate video in the description of this video on how to do this if you do not know how to flash MicroPython firmware to your device. So now we'll just click OK in here and we can now start testing the REPL command of our MicroPython firmware. You would notice that the REPL prompt was shown and we can access it by typing several information. For example, if I type help in here, then you would notice that it will display a message that this is the MicroPython running on my ESP32. And in this REPL prompt or the read evaluate to prompt, we can execute Python code. The example is if we can type 1 plus 1, then it will show you that it is the value is 2. So any Python code can be executed in this REPL prompt. Now that we have set up our REPL prompt, then we can now start preparing our project directory. Click on view and select files. In the, it will now show you two view in the left pane of your Tony IDE. The first one is the file section and the other one is the MicroPython device. In the file section, you can select where you want to, to place your project. In my case, I'll just select the Tony demo. Next, in the MicroPython device, you would notice that there are two files. One is the boot.py and the main.py. These are the two default executables or Python files that are executed by our microcontroller unit when it, it first boots or restarts. Next, the next thing that you would do is to create the program that we're going to deploy into our MicroPython microcontroller unit. The program that we're creating is the famous ESP32 Blink program. 
We are gonna be blinking the onboard LED of our microcontroller unit. What we can do is we can create right click on our piles in and then create a new pile and let's create name the pile main.py and just just click OK. In the main.py pile, we can now create the program for our project. In my case, I'm just going to copy the program for the blinking of the LED. So, as a simple explanation on how this program will run is that I'm just defining the onboard pin to be 2 and then I have an infinite loop here and then I'm just toggling the value of the LED. Upon toggling the LED pin value, I will just sleep for 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. Once you understood the code, then you can save the program. Let's click save. Control S. And you would notice that the main.py can now be seen in the pile pane of our files view. Now that we have created our main.py, then it's time to run it into our microcontroller unit. To do that, you can click this run current script. And then what this button will do is that it will run the content of our editor into the REPL prompt of our microcontroller unit. And you would notice that our ESP32 onboard LED is now blinking, which means that we were able to successfully create a MicroPython program if we try accessing the main.py and you would notice that there is a message called device is busy, which means that our microcontroller unit is busy running our MicroPython program. In order to interrupt the running of the our MicroPython program, we can click run and then interrupt execution. Once we have interrupted execution, you would notice that the prompt is now available. If we now click the main.py inside our MicroPython device, then you would notice that it is blank. Notice that the main.py in the MicroPython device is different from the main.py that is inside our Windows local directory. If you want your program to be executed when you restart or reboot your microcontroller unit, then you will need to upload this particular program into the file system of our MicroPython device. And to do that, you can just click in, click in this file and then upload to. And then if there's a question that there's a, an override, just click OK. And now if we try to access the main.py in our MicroPython device, then you would notice that it is now updated with the program that we have in the main.py in our Windows file system, which means that we were able to successfully upload our local program into the MicroPython device file system. Now, even if we restart our MCU, then it will automatically load our script. And that's it for a simple demo on how to use the Tony IDE in developing MicroPython project. The right app for this project is found in the description of this video if you wanted to read more and some added information that I have created there. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!